Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be looking at how we can create option sets in Toddle. Now this whole thing that I'm doing is based around a much bigger video that I'm going to make around creating a, a layout and a you know proper layout and a proper application navigation and everything in Toddle to mimic what I've done in Bubble but I just wanted to start off by making a video focused in on option sets because I really want to cover some of the elements that people are used to in Bubble. How do we do that in Toddle? Okay. And Toddle has a really nice, if slightly more technical, way of doing option sets. So, what I've got here is a page with a bit of a layout on it, which looks like, uh, let's go and have a look at a preview of it, which looks like this. So I've just got the blue colours in there just to get the layout of the design okay and the idea is that we've got a, <clears throat> a general container we've got a header we've got the main body of the of the app and then we're going to have a navigation down the side okay which kind of mimics uh, this essentially so we've got the all the options down the, the left hand side and we want to do the same thing in toddle now the way this is done in bubble is pretty simple it's done via option set so all of these options are contained uh, as options in an option set so let's have a look at that you can see that here they are an option set called main options and then i've got these options here um, which are all in the the text itself are contained in the as usual in the, in the display built-in attribute and then we've i've added excuse me some other uh, attributes that contain the uh, the icon and the url where it's going to go to okay so we can mimic that fairly easily in Toddle, but it's not quite as, how can I put this? It's not quite as kind of abstracted out as 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 Bubble, the way that Bubble does it. But still, it's, a, it's still a very, very, very nice way that you, we can do this in Toddle. So what we can do is we go to the data section and there isn't an option for option sets, but what we can do is to create a variable. So we'll plus on that. And what we'll do, we will call these uh, main options, just like we've done in the bubble one. And in fact, what we'll do is I'll even put the underscore underneath to make it seem even more friendly. So what we've got there is initial value is nothing. So we can't really do a lot in here, to be honest. We can, but it will just get a little bit awkward. So our best way to set an initial value, which will be the only value, they'll be static, just like bubbles option sets are. And what we'll do is we'll create a formula. So we'll click our FX, which if you watched my previous video, you'll know all about. So effectively, it's, usually it's the same as setting a, you know, insert dynamic data. In this case, it's not specifically, it's not explicitly dynamic. Okay, so what we can do then, let's click there, and then we can say, so we're going to create an array because that's effectively what an option set is. An array is just a list of things, okay? and so we're going to say we're going to set an array and we're going to add uh, one item in there and then we need to say okay what is the item that we're going to add in so what i'm going to do is i'm going to plus there to say what's the input for that and i'm going to create an object and again like i say it's not quite as non-techy as bubble is it, this more aligns with actual code but don't get confused by the, the terminology here. An array is a list. An object is just a piece of information that can contain one or more pieces of information. So if you look at option sets, each option is an object, effectively. So rather than look at it as an option, call it an object. So we've got some, some properties as part of the option set, or attributes as they call it. We've got the display, the built-in one, then we've got the icon, and then we've got the URL, okay? So what we're gonna do in this one, we're gonna have the, the name, which is the display, and then we'll have the icon. So we will do that. Again, I'm just trying to sort of make you not be, if you're not used to programming and used to doing things in a very bubbly way, which is kind of abstract, abstracts out this terminology for you, is that it's just a difference in words, okay? An array is a list, an object is an option just exactly the same thing so key is what we're going to call the first one and just to keep it really familiar with bubble i'm going to just call that uh, display 
okay and then it's going to say well, what's the value of your first one and that is going to be dashboard okay that's our first option and then if we want to add another attribute to this option then we just click this, this plus at the side and then we're going to say that this is going to be our icon for now we're just mimicking what we've got now uh, this is going to take a bit more explaining how i'm going to do this because it's a bit different than in bubble so but that's our first object our first option in our array our option set list okay so what we can do we'll go full screen on this and we will plug that to the top and we'll add another one and what it's done it's copied the first one which makes it really easy for us we can just put the values in now so this one is going to be leads okay we're just mimicking what's in in here okay so it's leads contact businesses products okay we'll leave the value empty for the time being and then all we've got to do is add another one and you can see it's just adding down so it's really quite quite nice actually i quite like it and the next one is going to be contacts okay and the next one is going to be businesses okay and one last one for now is going to be products if i can spell right my typing is terrible when i'm making videos right okay so we've got five options five objects in our array okay and then the output is simply these one two three and we can see what we've got there okay so that is our variable which is our option set effectively we've just mimicked an option sets in toddle okay so right let's take this to the next step and let's put these options on our nav bar here okay so our nav bar is this one which is this div i've got an image hidden which i can uh, maybe show let's have a look mm, yeah i've got this so at the minute i've got it switched off so uh, what i will do is i'll just set it to true so that it looks like our other one why not show the logo eh? why not do a little bit of <laughs> promo while i'm at it right so we're going to need to display these things so if you watched the last video the way that we do this the way that we mimic a repeating group by having a list of options that we can use our option set if you remember in bubble the way that we do it is we use our where are we here yeah we use our option set as the data source so in here i've got a repeating group and the the data source is all main options all options in our option set and then each one is just displayed down so we can do effectively the same thing in here as well so the way that we can do that then is to add a repeater a list repeat effectively so what we're going to do then is we're going to add an element and we're going to say it's a list okay and as usual that gives us our unordered list with our list item we're going to repeat the first list item so we don't need these so we can just sort of get rid of these okay and what we can do then on this unordered list is simply uh, get right click and select repeat and then we give it the formula that we're going to use what are we going to list effectively and obviously it's going to be the the option set the array that we just created which is main options and then we've got our five options that we created on there okay so that's very very similar to what we would do in bubble there's really not a great deal of difference at all when you think about it so in here let's say for example that we certainly don't want like a black background so let's change that uh where are we at this gray background so uh we will just we will actually just bin that off we don't need it and there we've got our list item which is our text so what we could do we do in there really is to put that in a paragraph rather than have it under there so we will click on our li and add a paragraph okay just drag that up there and we can actually delete this one and just use the one that it's given us uh we're probably going to need just need to style this a little bit let's 
say the color is going to be let's say that one that's nice enough the size it's giving us now then <laughs> since my last video the guys at toddle uh, I, mean, I don't claim that they watched me and just had an epiphany i'm sure they were working on it anyway uh so but they've enabled you to basically size your text as you like you don't necessarily have to have their predefined options so i'm just going to set that to 13 uh, px on there as the size of our, our uh, text i'm just going to put some gap spacing of 20 px between our options that didn't work why is that okay all right we're not okay yeah okay we've got a height of 32 that's what's killing it so let's get rid of that uh, there we go that's better let's put some gap spacing of 20 px in there as well so what we need to do then in here is we need to give it the formula the insert dynamic data to be able to grab the the display attribute from the list that we're looking at so we're going to click this and remember item is in terms of the context of a repeating group or or a repeated item is the equivalent is item is equivalent of uh, current cell in bubbles repeating group so we're going to point that we're going to say display okay and we can straight away see that we've we've got our items there and obviously that's too big for that so we probably need to look at changing the uh, I mean all the sizes I've already set up so I don't really want it this isn't about uh, designing sizes and stuff but let's just change that to say 12 pixels okay it's big enough to actually display it uh, right okay let's have a look what, what font have we got what we're using okay let's have a look so if I Okay. By the way, when I was making the previous video, I was sort of struggling to make things scroll, just using the 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 cursor keys. What the best way to scroll in Toddle is something just to get used to is use your mouse wheel. Okay, and that's the the best way to to scroll. If something's a list that's going off the page, just use the mouse wheel. Okay, no need so. Okay, and then yeah, that okay, that's better. And to get that to th well, I'll tell you what I wanted to do was wait. Uh, I wanted to get where's the wait? Okay, again, I mean, these things are sort of uh, static options. I'm sure that in time to come they will change those to where you can more specifically define the settings. Okay, so those those were our options. Let's take a look at it in here. Okay, and there are our options using option sets so that's a basically a quick tutorial on the equivalent of option sets in toddle i think it's great i think it's just as, as simple and straightforward just a slight different way of getting at it uh, if you need to edit them you could or you, you have to go back into click on the the variable and then to edit it rather than go into all this click the formula key and then we're into it all and then we can specify it now in terms of the icon that I've got there, in the, the main video that I'm making, I'm gonna go into detail about that. I don't really think I should go into it here because it's a bit too involved. My, my purpose of this is just to show you the equivalent of option sets in Toddle. So just before we finish off, one thing that I did notice that I've done, uh, which we should have a look at is, I put the repeater on the unordered list so what's happening is that's causing the whole list to repeat which was a one item what we really want to do is just to have this one item repeat so what i should actually do let's put the here okay and let's bin that which is gonna destroy it temporarily okay and then let's put it on here instead which is the rightful place where it should have been and that is going to be main options and yeah okay so it doesn't appear to be too much of a difference it's just that with this one we repeated the one item within the list whereas the way that i was doing it before we were repeating the, the whole list uh, element every everything for every single item so yeah just a bit of a mistake that i noticed okay so thanks again for watching see you in the next one and take it easy